welcome to the Brown Paint Podcast. My name is Adi Wijay and this is Anjali Sengupta. Anjali is a Melbourne-based dance movement therapist, creative arts therapist, community arts facilitator, arts educator, and holistic well-being and fitness professional. I actually remembered all of that. I'm so proud. Uh, thank Woo-hoo! you, Anjali, for being here today. Let's start with the welcome to country, if that's cool with you. Sure. Sure. Thank you for having me, Adhira. Um, And before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners on the land on which we are meeting. I pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging and the Aboriginal elders of other communities who are here today. Um, Also just need to let people know that my dog is here. She does tend to upstage me. Uh, and ends up starring in all my videos, especially in that. lockdown. So uh, if she needs to go out, as she probably does want to, but we'll, we'll wait for her to make some noise. <laughs> so in case I, I need to get up and, and move. We should just jump straight in. I'd love for you to just go through, um, from your childhood really to up until now, um, how you you know fell in love with the arts, any kind of cultural backlash that you faced um and yeah how you really got to where you are today (laughs) um so i'm going to give you the the short version obviously because Mm -hmm. uh, we only have an hour Um, (laughs) but one of the um i guess one of the benefits of being in in a brown culture is that the arts music dance movement um, is is very big. Like it it, it existed in our schools. Um, we mm-hmm. used to do a song and dance at the drop of a hat. Literally, wow. we would have performances for Teachers' Day, for Helpers' Day, for um, whatever day, Mother's Day, Father's Day. Um, we would we would have performances. We had a stage and you know th- a, a hall with a stage in our school. And I actually remember. Um, in grade three, we had our first big production, uh, which was, of course, um, um, it, I think it was about Noah's Ark or something like that. So I was in a convent school. Um, and I remember um, in grade three, cartwheeling across stage. That was my first performance. Oh, I um, love that. <laughs> and then in grade eight, by the time I got to grade eight, so grade eight was really, was very controversial because I was chosen for the choir. Mm-hmm. So again, reminding you, I was in a convent school, so the choir was very highly valued and I ran away <laughs> and, and decided that, no, I wanted to be part of the dance and performance. But this yeah, because- is back in Bombay, India. Um, I was in an all girls convent school um Mm -hmm. which is very common for us to be in all girls or all boys schools um co-ed schools are not that common really Um, yeah yeah most most of the people i know in fact i i share house with uh two other indian women and they were Mm -hmm. also in all girls schools um right so i went uh, as i said it was really controversial because we had a male choreographer who would come in in bicycle shorts. Wow. And it, was all, it was all too much. Um, and um, yeah, it was really, really, f- really a, f- a fun experience for me. Although um, one of my, um, I guess, one of the patterns that I've, I've since broken through um, but at the time, there was this pattern of um, disappointment. Like I would, I had worked for months uh, to perform in this uh, this full, you know, production. Uh, we were hiring a theater. We had a choreographer, of course. We had music and acting and all of that. And uh, a couple of days before the performance, I had an appendix attack. Oh my gosh. So I actually had to have uh, emergency surgery and didn't end up doing the performance. Um, there's another story somewhere down the track where I was doing a huge, well, this was when I was a professional dancer. Um, mm. I ended up 
getting stitches in my foot and uh, oh my gosh. danced six, six performances with stitches in my foot. I still did it. Um, That's I've also crazy. Ta torn a muscle in my neck just before the show. And then I still did the show. Oh so, gosh. you know, I'm really grateful that I don't wow. have that pattern anymore. <laughs> But that's, I guess, where my love for dance started. Um, it was in school yeah. and doing all these different dance styles. We did do a little bit of classical Indian dancing as mm. well. Um, but singing and dancing was just part of our normal mm. life. And was normal it a mix life. of um, Western and Eastern uh, music and yeah. dance? Yeah. One of my first songs are probably going to um, reveal my age now, but one of the first <laughs> songs I chore choreographed was, um, uh, oh, I can't remember, it, the music went, dun -dun 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 it was uh, <laughs> Party Line, I think yeah. was the name oh. of the song. <laughs> And then I, I choreographed a Michael Jackson um, song as well. Uh, I think it was black or white. And I actually did it with oh, all the different Indian styles of dance. You know how he goes and, and showcases all these different cultural dances. Oh. I, I, ch I changed that to, um, okay, let's showcase all our Indian, oh, <laughs> all beautiful. our Indian dances. Wow. So we were doing like, Garba, which is the clapping dance. And oh my god! Yeah. Anyway, I'm having a lot of fun reminiscing. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, moving right along. So up until that point, it was obviously it was a hobby and it was extracurricular mm -hmm. uh, activities that were part of our lifestyle. I guess it, you mm. know, growing up in in a country like India where music and dance is an integral part of our yeah. um I wanted to ask culture. did you grow up watching Bollywood? Um yes in this well the best of Bollywood um growing up was definitely the 80s. The the mm, 80s that's what movies everyone says. Are, yeah. are absolutely the bomb. You can you can still watch them and really enjoy them and um that's when the industry I won't say it peaked, but it really, it grew to, you know, um, it, when I was um, doing some research on Bollywood, I, I found out that it was around the 60s and 70s that Bollywood started to churn out the most number of movies per year. So, you know, mm. it's a, it's a wow. movie factory. <laughs> um, yeah. They make the most number of films in the world. Um, crazy. So, you know, the 60s and 70s led to, led to this sort of golden era in mm. Bollywood. Um, all the big name stars who are now um, like the pillars of the industry mm. um, were, were like um, They made themselves formed, then. I guess yeah. that's how, yeah, that was when they, they became who they are today. Mm. Um, so I have to admit, I used to, I loved watching the movies in the 80s and then I hated it for a long time. A lot time. of people say that. <laughs> yeah. I get the same um, thing every time I ask anyone about Bollywood. Um, yeah. <laughs> and now it's, uh, now it's based on recommendations and, you know, I do have a lot of friends and colleagues who are still in the industry. And so I get all the inside gossip and they're like, oh, you need to watch this movie. And I'm like, yes. only because you're telling me <laughs> I will watch it because I don't have the patience what for is a it three about hour long movies, saga. Though? I need to know. What is it about <laughs> the new movies that I'm, by the way, for anyone who doesn't know, I'm, I'm Sri Lankan. So I did not grow up. I think I've watched like maybe one or two Bollywood movies. Um, so I don't know too much about it, but I'm really excited to learn more. Um, what, why does everyone say that it, like, what's the difference between that golden era and now? Um, I think what started to happen is it became very formula driven. Right. Um, and, you know, it, it, it eventually, like in the 80s, and there, w there was a lot of diversity in terms of the stories and the music and the, the, um, the dialogues were really rich. And, you know, because the, the Indian Hindi language is, is full of metaphor and it's so, it's very po poetic. 
mm-hmm. but oh, along the way it sort of lost that it lost the poet right. poetics of dialogue and it became very formula driven because you know x plus y equals a big hit so right. we're going to make 75 different versions of that same formula boy uh, meets girl girls yes. from a different culture <laughs> boy is rich girl is poor or girl is rich boy is poor no they can't be together and the whole i mean <laughs> i thought so yeah yeah so there's about you know 25 million different versions of yeah. particular storylines and then um, I think what's happened in recent years, and maybe this is my bias, um, but uh, I'm sorry, I'm just going to check because my phone is yes, gone off again. again. Uh, um, oh, no. I'm just going to... I'll get back on. Yeah, you stay yeah, where you are. I'm just going to request. I'm live and you request. Um, cool. So the... Yes, I was going to say my bias now, some of the movies... Um, are actually quite um, um, innovative and you know people are, are sort of going back to being a bit more creative but right. a lot of uh, a lot of my generation have now gone abroad studied abroad worked abroad and mm. you know bring that uh, different sensibility now like even if you listen to the music yes um, if you watch the visuals they're very you know, Indo Western. So it's yes, more of a that. more of I a wasn't combination sure between how to feel about that because I felt <laughs> I don't know. It's just like a, again a whole other bunch of brown people trying to be white. It's like why would I watch that when I can you know I came here to well, watch Hollywood. <laughs> there's a bit of that. There's a lo- okay. There's a lot of that. Um, but there's also the fact that they're now catering to a global Indian audience because Indians right. live yes. all over the that world, right? Yeah. Um, so there was a, a an acronym that was coined a while ago, which is ABCD, um, which stands for American Born Confused Desi. <laughs> <laughs> I relate to that so much. Yeah, so you yeah. can you can you can change that to ABCS. Yes, yes. American uh, or Australian born confused uh, Sri Lankan. Yeah. Um, because you know one of the things that um, I've learned through making peace with my culture mm. is um, this phrase that you know you can take the Indian out of India but you can't take the Indian out of an Indian. Mm. Like I will Mm. always be, you know, I will always look and sound and dress um, and and move (laughs) and express like an Indian. And um, Mm. it, it definitely took leaving my culture and being away from it and not being in it Mm. and bombarded by it. Yes, come, that's come beautiful. To that appreciation. Let's get to that, but let's go back to the story because I realize we've gone on a tangent. So back to yes. your childhood and after you know that school. So realizing school, that- yeah, school um, exposed me to moving and dancing and choreographing for fun, mm-hmm. and um, uh, for some reason. I had in my mind this list, you know, after year ten because year ten is huge in in India and all Asian cultures education is really massive and is overvalued and so one of the things that happened for me leaving school even though I got um, you know best all-round student awards and those types of things I was never just purely an academic I wasn't just uh, inclined towards education Um, so I never actually considered um, myself a creative funny to say that now uh, I, t- I, I went through know, the same thing so I totally understand I totally understand. that's the yeah I, I couldn't imagine myself um creating something new every day I, mm, I couldn't me to see no myself structure. doing that it freaked me out yeah um and also because it wasn't a thing like it wasn't a thing you either had to be a doctor an engineer 
or uh, you know, go into business. Yeah, hundred um, percent. And my parents are doctors, and so that was sort of kind of the, you know there was a, a bit of pressure around that mm. to to um, study and. Um, but having said all of that, after I finished year ten. I had in my mind that I wanted to start these dance classes that I'd been really like hanging out to start. And um, I finished year 10, I think it was in March. And then um, maybe the next month I went for a class. And after two classes, the choreographer asked me to perform at this big show where um, there's an artist called Apache Indian, who you may not have heard of, but no. he's a, he's an international artist who was wow. coming to India to perform. And so my first show was with an audience of 5,000 people at wow. this huge sports stadium. <laughs> I was 16 insane. years old oh and goodness. I learned um, two songs. Um, one of them was Addicted to Love by... Um, what's his name Michael Palmer or oh, I forget the artist but uh if you if you type in okay. addicted to love you'll have a bit of a laugh because as a 16 year old it was probably not the most appropriate song in like, oh. fake god I was wearing fake goddess and a leotard and oh, know, wow. so, um yeah and and I did what did your parents song. think of it did your parents know um, my parents kind of knew at the time, but they, they just knew because I was so into extracurricular activities. Uh, so they were just like, oh, she's my doing whole life up to that. Oh, yeah. So she's, you know, <laughs> she's doing that thing. Yeah. And, and I was pretty good with um, getting myself to classes or getting myself mm. to rehearsals or getting myself to training or, you know, because I was just a really physically active kid. Um, mm -hmm. If I wasn't dancing, I was playing sport, I was running, yeah. I was playing um, throw ball and all these, yeah. all these kinds of things. So, so at the start, they didn't really think much of it, but um, I didn't stop. So I started yeah. as, as a 16 year old and then I got invited to, um, uh, to teach. And mm -hmm. um, that first show though, um, I, I have such vivid memories because I was hooked. I was hooked. There was no, like I, I, I walked onto stage and we were mm -hmm. doing the song Chol Cholike Piche, which at the time was like the most popular Bollywood song in the world. And um, we were just, I remember we had our big long, you know, Choli skirts and we, we entered just kind of swishing the skirts oh, and the whole, 5,000 strong audience <gasps> just went rawr! And there wow. was just this huge surge of energy, a full blast. And I was like, this is awesome. And then I got my first paycheck. I was like, oh this is goodness. too good not to, like <laughs> I'm being paid to do something that I love doing. This is freaking awesome. I didn't Crazy. know that you could do that, you know? Um, and so I continued to dance on the side at that time, but it was mm -hmm. still professional dancing. And wow. I went on to study science. I did a bachelor's degree and I was dancing um, uh, basically the rest of the time, like nine to five was college, five to nine was teaching dance, nine wow. till about 10.30 was rehearsals for some performance or something. Um, and then I would go out dancing at night like just wow. uh, I was just you know six hours on the dance floor and then go back wow. and you know rinse and repeat for probably the next five five to seven years uh, wow. well, no initially it was five years yeah until I, I graduated and then and then my parents had the talk um what are you planning to do with your life wait hold um, on hold on <laughs> <laughs> ask more about just just a little a little bit more about those five years like what kind of work did you do were you like in involved in Bollywood at all um tell me some all kinds of work you did yeah every possible so thing so the first the first uh seven years 
was with a dance company, um, mm -hmm. which uh, is called Shamak Tavers Institute for the Performing Arts. They mm -hmm. are a global phenomenon now. They teach all over say, the I world. I feel like I've heard of them. Yeah, they really You big, would right? have heard of them. Yeah. They came and performed for the Commonwealth Games here in Melbourne. Remember wow. when they were, because Commonwealth Games was going to India the next year. So they had this whole team. Oh from India, which was, of course, wow. uh, all my peeps, you know, because I got oh to meet gosh. them. I went, I went oh to meet God. them. It was, wow. it was so, so cool. Like my, my worlds yeah. were sort of coming together. Oh my um, God. Are they a traditional um, dance troupe or do they do everything or? When I was with them, we, um, for, I would say for the first five years, it was all English. So it was all jazz, uh, Latin dance, mm. funk, wow. hip hop. Um, and then towards the end, we started to get into Bollywood. And then my choreographer got into Bollywood and we did, um, well, I did my first Bollywood film with him. <gasps> Oh my and, gosh. Um, What's it called? National, it's called Dil to Pagal Hai. Uh, oh my gosh, I have to search Shahrukh, it. Shahrukh, yeah, it has Shahrukh Khan and Madhuri Dixit and Karina Kapoor. Oh my God. And, uh, <laughs> and it won a national, what did it We won the national, national award for choreography. Um, wow. Because, well, what you see now in Bollywood um, basically started there. The, the whole format and because um, up until that time, you'd see the Bollywood stars in the foreground, like the cameras focused on them. Right. And the dancers would be like yeah. somewhere in the background there doing yeah. some random thing. And um, because we were all... Um, so one of the things about the dance industry in, in India and Bollywood in general, it it is... Um, made up of untrained dancers and choreographers there, right. there was no there was yeah. no formal training and only i think it's only in the last five years um so the mob that i started with chama mm -hmm. they've they've started some training um and they connected with debbie allen you know debbie allen who did um uh, fame and she's, oh, wow. she's like debbie allen really um amazing um, choreographer from the US, I think. Um, mm -hmm. So they do have training now, but we never had, there was no such thing as trained dancers in the industry until we did that first movie because um, Shamak had had some training um, at Pineapple Institute, at Alvin oh, wow. Ailey. So he had traveled and done some training and he brought down a couple of trainers. Like I remember this Greek pocket rocket who just, he smashed us, but he, I mean, he was amazing. Um, but we would, we would just be like lying on the floor at the end of his session. So we were at that time, we were the only trained dancers in the industry. And of course, as you can imagine, it really showed. Uh, you know, the, the level of the, the, um, the performing, uh, the performance in that film was really amazing. And we were on par with the actors and actresses. Um, I mean, like I was actually yeah. assisting Shamak, so I was teaching the wow. actors and actresses as well at the time. Wow. Um, and uh, yeah, so it just totally changed the way Bollywood um, wow. dances were, were shot and, and what they look like now is very much based on um, what happened around that time with Shamak and then other people came in. Um, yes. And so uh, how many Bollywood industry. films did you do? do? Um, so with that choreographer, we did uh, Dil To Pagal Hai and Tal. And then I was in another film, but this time as a model. So oh, wow. the, bo Bollywood films are very, uh, film sets rather, are very hierarchical. And right. depending on where you are in the hierarchy, you have a totally different experience, right? Yeah. So I had, I had the experience of being a dancer, 
and then I had the experience of being a model. And then I also had the experience of being um, uh, an actor, actress. Oh, wow. Um, <gasps> I know that was, I mean, that was an English language film made by um, uh, an Indian guy. It's a to film it called, then. no, no. I mean, it was just, I was, I was in the background. There's a film called uh, Everybody Says I'm Fine. Okay. And it was all about this hairdresser. And so I was playing one of the hairdressers at the salon um, and only have one dialogue. So I d don't, don't, <laughs> don't, don't hold your breath for okay. <laughs> uh, my great acting skills. Still so cool but, though. But it was, yeah, it was really interesting to have all those different experiences and to kind of see that transition where as a dancer, you're treated like, uh, you know, uh, not so good, let's yeah. say. And um, every other uh, role yeah, you have is, is somewhere higher up on mm -hmm. the hierarchy. So. Are the so that was famous interesting. Bollywood actors, what was it like working with them? Are they really um, like standoffish and rude or like up themselves or arrogant? Well, were they actually like, nice? Look, when we were dancing, I mean, uh, so the first movie which had Shah Rukh in it, Shah Rukh Khan, Shah Rukh's wife uh, used to dance with us. Oh. So we kind of had that familiarity and connection and he and, and Shamak, uh, who is a choreographer, you know, already knew each other and had a friendship. So it was really cool working with them. It was really cool working with um, Yash Raj Productions, which is um, Yash, Yash Raj film still, still is, you know, one of the really big production houses in, in Bollywood. Um, they were amazing to work with. I also worked, worked with, um, Ashwarya Rai for Whoa. the movie Tal, um, where wow. uh, yeah, I've heard of that again. Yeah. I don't know Bollywood too well, but I've heard of that. Yeah, That's yeah, insane. that was kind of um, one of the movies that made her like she debuted wow. and then obviously she went like? on to she's she's quite cool. Um, I uh worked with her for that film because I taught her. We had this, so, so we were cool. shooting, <laughs> yeah, we were shooting, one of the sequences we were shooting was on the film fair set. So the film fair awards is like the Indian Oscar awards. And um, the set was only up for an, one night after the show. So the show went on, like they had the film fair awards, awards night was over, and then they were going to break the set down the next day. So we had a 15 hour long shoot through the night. Wow. Um, and it, you know, in, in Bollywood, as, as I'm sure you're aware with in other um, music videos or anywhere where you're, you're shooting dance, you usually don't do more than a couple of bars at a time, mm. but because we had these time constraints and we only had overnight to shoot that whole segment, mm. um, Ashwarya had to learn like a big chunk of the choreography. And so uh, we had rehearsals together and, you know, I taught her, uh, I think it was like 16 bars or something where we just had to go all out at a stretch. Yeah. And in the end, I think it was probably four in the morning when we were doing this whole sequence wow. and it was like jumping. It was like a bit contemporary. And all wow, this. that's um, crazy. So I have like amazing memories um, wow. of the time for sure. They that were uh, amazing like to work with. Years. Wow. Oh yeah. And wow. there's, there, I mean, there's, there's evidence, you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, like a, fr a friend of mine was watching, um, I think she was watching Tal and sent me a screenshot and she said, look who I found. I was like, oh my God, yes, that's me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's so cool. Wow. Yeah, so, so, uh, so you dropped out of a science degree. Oh wait, you finished the No, science? no, no. I finished, I finished my degree. Right. But then you I chose kept... to do this. I continued with the dance work um, right. and I think by that time, oh no, not yet. So up and like my parents were not supportive mm. of me doing this, which yeah. interestingly enough, we have these contrasting um, 
threads in our culture um, where, you know, on the one hand, the arts and dance is such a big part of our culture, yes. but actually being a dancer is next to being like selling your body. Yes. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. For um, sure. So, so there was this, this sort of um, contradiction, I suppose. Mm. Um, and especially when it's not classical. So like classical mm. Indian dance is all great. And you know, it, it, it's, it's fine to do it, but again, you do it on the side. You yes. don't do that as yeah. your main thing. Such um, an interesting double standard. But by the time, <laughs> absolutely. By the time I finished, um, by the time I graduated, I was, um, I just found myself in an industry that is so, like now when I look back, I, I can see it's so advanced and so widespread. Mm -hmm. Like by the time I graduated, I could have dance work the whole year and not be, wow. you know, really? not be sitting around waiting for work. Wow. So you, you were and a successful dancer. You'd been in Bollywood film after Bollywood film and your parents are still like, not proud of you they're like they no, don't just successful. not very they didn't get it and look again um in asian cultures in india um you know education and and being a doctor or an engineer or, you know those are the things that are valued and that are known this is a complete unknown no one in my family is a mm. creative i mean my mom is my mom is very creative on the side you know she mm. paints and she um, yes, does, yeah. does all of these creative projects but she's a doctor first mm. right um yeah. and so it wasn't really the done thing at the time but eventually my mom i remember actually when when things turned um i was doing the um spurn off international fashion awards uh Ooh. we were we were performing and i was doing golden eye uh the song from from james james bond and i had this huge afro wig like literally it was wow. like that <laughs> it was that wow. big. And uh, I was performing on stage and lip syncing and I had like four men lifting me and you know, I was doing all these things. And I think for the first time, probably my mom saw me in my element, you know, she just, Aww. she just, and, and she messaged me after and, and she basically, I think she recognized that, that this is my calling. Wow. Um, and so after that, uh, you know, I mean, after that, there was never that, okay, so what are you doing with your life conversation? Yes, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, up until that point, there was always that questioning of what, what is your career choice? What are you going to yeah. do in life? And I was like, can't you see I'm dancing for a living or can't you see I'm making candles for a living? Like I was doing that as well for yeah. a while. <laughs> <in there. laughs> thrown into the mix um yes so yeah it was really wow. you know sort of How reflecting on some of the when that um kind of when she had that revelation when she saw you dancing probably about 23 or 24 by then because oh, I started at bad. 16 yeah, yeah so it was seven <laughs> years I remember it being like seven years in the industry and suddenly, you know, this one fine day, she was like, oh, okay, this is, mm. this is what you're doing now. Um, you and of what, course now, like now it all makes sense because yeah. I went on to, you know, do dance therapy and art therapy and all of these things. Mm. But at that time, like good on them because I was so mm. rebellious and I was so um, against the flow of like, mm. I was always swimming against the current, you know, everyone yeah. was going that way. I and feel I was you going, so much. I'm going this way. <laughs> <laughs> um, but there was never, I didn't see it as a choice. Like for me, it was never a choice of dancing or not, or not dancing. Like it, I, there was no choice. I had to. I totally to. feel you. Yeah. I had to do it. And one year of my life, when I quit, um, the dance company that I was in, I, um, I was, I was 
not aware that there was anything beyond that because mm -hmm. we had been um, so kind of protected and sheltered in that dance company and told that we were the only trained dancers and we were the elite and you know there wasn't mm -hmm. sort of any life outside of this particular mm. dance company, yeah. dance environment. I'm sure others who've been in dance companies have experienced that before. Yeah, yeah, it does tend to happen. You kind yeah. of talk everyone else down or yeah. like they don't even, like nothing yeah. exists. So, so that your members don't leave you, yeah. Basically, <laughs> yes. Um, and so I um, was not working for a year. I was not dancing for a year. And that was my most miserable year of my mm. existence. And so I learned through that, that um, it's, it's not an option for me to not be dancing in some shape or form. So I've always made mm. space for it in some way. I wanted to ask, so what advice would you give um, young budding brown creatives on I guess you know going against the floor uh, going against the flow and um, doing the thing that you're passionate about and how do you deal with your parents and um, especially because you know I think that there's uh, two types of brown parents or rather three actually there's the progressive type that are genuinely like accepting and then there's the complete tiger parent and then there's I think our parents would fall into the third category which is um, they'll come around eventually and that might take a very long time but they'll come around eventually how do you how do you deal yeah. with type number two and three especially if they're a tiger parent like just a complete yeah you know, um look i think it actually speaks to the relationship that you have mm. with your your parents and the the family dynamic right. um it can be really hard if you have really, really conservative parents and you've lived your whole life listening to everything they tell you to do. Mm. Um, and so what kind of, um, I guess what worked for me was, um, you were rebellious you know, from the beginning, doing things, doing things your own way here and there, like yeah, starting to, that makes sense. starting to, um, clash a little bit around some yeah. of the, the other stuff. So, or, or, or negotiate, mm. negotiate and go, okay, look, I'm happy to, you know, like in, in, in my family, it was all about, you know, you have to come for these family events. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know these people. Oh gosh, I've never yes. met them before, but no, 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 you have to. So, so, you know, one idea might be to negotiate and go, okay, look, I'm happy to always show up at these places where I, you know, I'm obligated to, um, but you've got to allow me to do this X number of times a week, or this is, you know, a class that I really have to go for. And I would like your support in that. So mm -hmm. I think it's a combination of, um, you know, cause the rebelliousness, the rebellious streak, um, as I later learned mm -hmm. when I was studying, um, when I was studying art therapy, I, I remember coming across a book where they talked about when mothers and daughters clash. Mm. And, and what they were su saying was, suggesting was, that actually speaks to um, a, a daughter who has a strong personality. Mm. So you clash when you yeah. actually have a strong personality because you have opinions or perspectives that are different to your mm. parents. And that's not a bad thing, but mm. sometimes it can be because in our culture, um, the norm is to follow in the footsteps of your parents. Yes. Right? Yeah. Like my grandparents were doctors and so my parents became doctors and and partially that's because uh it's easier because you know mm. that world you know yeah um, and it's familiar and mm. and it's a, a known entity rather than an unknown entity mm. but i think a lot of that that you know a, a lot of that pressure from our parents comes from fear mm. comes from them uh, not knowing this yes. whole cr 
creative space. And not having proof that it will work out. Not they have a plethora proof. of proof that being a doctor will work out. Whereas and I don't know yes, anyone who's yes. an artist. They think that, yeah. uh, right? Yeah. They believe yeah. that. But also that uh, there's this myth around financial security. Yes. And, yeah. And mm. I like to think of it as a myth because... Um, you know, they believe if you have money in the bank, everything's going to be good. Mm. And I challenge that. <laughs> yeah, I, I still have to challenge that in in my parents. But at the same time, money is good. Like I'm, I don't uh, have anything against money. Mm. Uh, and I think as a creative, you've got to, you've got to develop both your right brain and your left brain. Yes. So as someone who's creative, you are more right brained. Okay. Mm. You're, you're good with going with the flow and being spontaneous and improvising and creating something out of nothing. Mm. Um, but you may not be good with the, um, the admin side of things, yes. the, the logic and the structure and the order and str mm. strategy and having a plan. Yeah. yeah. And you've got to marry those two up. And also mm -hmm. I firmly believe that you've got to question this myth of the struggling artist. Oh yes. I had to work through that so much. I had so much uh, trauma and conditioning there that I we had all do. to undo because we and all do. what's interesting is I've talked about this in a video, um, but I did a meditation that really quite like it changed my life in terms of that conditioning. And I sat and allowed my kind of past memories of my childhood to come up. And there were things that I didn't remember. And the single biggest hitting memory that I had come up that I've completely forgotten was we used to watch Big Bang Theory um, oh, yeah. at dinner and the way my parents used to talk about Penny in Big Bang Theory, ah, the struggling wait waitress that was yes, constantly auditioning yes. and never landing anything and forever yes. waiting tables. And that was the moment um, I, that struggling artist ideal really like stuck into me. And ever yeah. since then I had this thing where it was like, oh my God, I'm ne I, if, if I become an art artist, it is synonymous with waiting tables for the rest of my life. Like there, there is no way I can have, I can be an artist without having to wait tables. Yeah. yeah. And so you have, I think <laughs> most of us, every artist will have some form of that or the other. Yes. Right. Yeah. Some of that is definitely the overvaluing of, um, you know, um, I would say, masculine career choices mm -hmm, you yeah. know versus feminine ones so being creative like those are mm -hmm. those are more um, feminine energy yeah that's yeah. right um so there's an overvaluing of those and an undervaluing of these so mm -hmm. part of it is recognizing that this is as important the work that we mm -hmm. do as artists is sure. as important um, I mean, look at us in lockdown. Now. I was going to say, like, what would we have done without Netflix? Like, what would, what we would <laughs> Netflix, all the live stream books. performances, oh all the free goodness. things, on, Music. the classes, dance yeah. classes. I mean, people would not survive. Imagine yeah. if we had lockdown with no artists. It'd be crazy. Uh, we would not, we would, uh, well, we would insane. not have a lot of people here. A lot of yes, people would either go insane or uh, like, you know, God forbid. Uh, anyway, yeah. I, yeah. I wouldn't get too dark, but yes. um, so it's valuing what we do. Um, mm -hmm. But then it's also questioning your mindset and questioning um, mm -hmm. uh, whether you can reprogram yourself. Yes. into believing that you can be an artist in abundance mm, that you can yeah. live an abundant life and abundance includes money but it's not only about money yes you know abundance yeah. is about filling yourself up um so yeah like i would be i would question the mindset around that and if you're not good with 
the admin side of things mm. learn yeah it's because like as an artist you have you to can't... learn to market yourself as an artist as well and play the game that is the industry that's a huge part of it and i think that's Get a lot, a lot of reasons why artists fail or they, they and then they say oh it doesn't work it's because you know no one actually they train you how to dance but they don't train you how to you know do all the other stuff how like, how to work the system shot. The you got to know, yeah, you got to know how to work the system. Know what's, uh, know what you need, like, you know, whether it's a portfolio, a resume, get it all looking like it should have it in the format that it should. Um, and then also like, don't get too attached to the art. Yes. <laughs> like, don't no. get too I totally agree. One particular, no, I will only do this kind of work or no, I will only like, especially when you're starting out, you've got to try got to everything yes, firstly. Everything. Yeah. And, and you've got to, th through that process, get to know who you are as an artist. What is your mm. kala? As we, in, in Hindi, it's called kala, your mm. artistry. Ooh, Develop. Beautiful. Yeah, develop a relationship with your artistry. Know you know who you are as an artist, or get to know who you are. Like, mm. you know, a silly, simple example that comes up was I remember we were doing a show performing for, um, I, th I think it was like the prime minister or some government. Oh people. my gosh, Anjali! And, I always and, knew you were cool, um, but I didn't realize you were this cool. <laughs> Listen, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm trying not to name drop, but I have performed with Sting on stage. I have performed with Sting before. I just will throw that in oh while we're goodness. name dropping. <laughs> you need to um, name drop more because this is so cool. <laughs> so I just remember that performance because at one of the rehearsals, they were um, um, taking down names of, oh, okay, who's going to perform this song? Who's going to perform that song? And I actually wasn't there on that day. And for some reason, don't ask me why, but we was performing the song Barbie Girl, right? <laughs> and okay. one of my dancer friends, colleagues, who knows that I would not be caught dead at that time <laughs> doing anything <laughs> like that, put, put their hand up. And like, I had to perform Barbie Girl for that particular show. And it was <laughs> nerve wracking, but it also um, introduced me to this idea of exploring different parts of yourself through yes, performance and through the arts, all these different characters mm. who you may not be like in your everyday life, mm. but you get to try them out and you that's get to explore and experiment. And yeah. that's what I mean by like, don't get too attached to one particular mm form or one particular identity especially mm. if you want to make money uh, you know if you want yeah. to be an artist that's supporting yourself and you have income you got to put yourself out there try out different um mm. things you know like i've done live mm. shows music videos uh movies uh commercials wow um, i mean from my experience doing ads and commercial like ad films is the best uh, in terms of pay. Uh, yeah. pay. You yeah, get pay paid a lot. for a maximum of Freaking a 90 great. second, you know, 90 second <laughs> ad as opposed to like three minute song or four minute song or a one hour show or, you know, so your the returns are a lot higher with ads mm -hmm. and commercial work, obviously. Yeah. Um, but I've like, I've hung from a ceiling acting like I'm, uh climbing down a strawberry um <laughs> or some fruit juice wow. ad or something on wow. the other like oh my goodness just have I love that. fun with it you yeah. know? <laughs> and and how's your um how's your relationship with your parents now how's that evolved and changed oh it's um it's totally transformed. I mean, they can see now because I went on to do further study as well. Like I think as right. an artist, you got to keep evolving and changing. Yes. Like I left India yes, at, we need at, to the, that. at the yeah. peak, like I was doing 
all the best jobs in the industry. I mm -hmm. never had to pick up a phone and chase work. I would, wow. and, and, and I was freelancing, right? So when you're freelancing, wow. there's always that nerve wracking um, period between yeah. jobs. Like you've just finished a job, you've come home, you've had a massage and you, you know, you're relaxing and then you're like, what if I when don't get another phone? one? <laughs> when is the phone going to ring? When am I going to get yeah. the next job? And I learned from my, um, well, he's a colleague, but he was also one of my, like my gurus and teachers. And, and I learned from him trust, you know, wow. to trust that if you're following your heart and you're doing what you love, and if it's your calling, oh, you've got to trust that that phone will ring. And I believe that's what made it, I mean, I, I think, you know, like you make things happen as well with your mindset and your belief system. And, you mm -hmm. know, when I first started, cause when I left um, the dance company after seven years, I mentioned that I had a break and then I actually restarted freelancing. And it was this person, this friend and colleague mm -hmm. who remembered that I used to dance with that company and he was doing a show and needed a dancer. And we had really connected um, on a Bollywood movie, on Thal actually, we had connected mm. on Thal. He was playing a role and um, he called me. And then I started working with him and he's the one who taught me this idea of, you know, trusting and, and believing in, in the work that you're doing. Mm. Yeah, and if your quality of work that you're pushing out is of a high caliber, you will get, you know, you will get people wow. calling you. And I never wow. had to, you know, make a single That's phone awesome. call after that. I think I was working for another four or five years, started doing choreography and then left mm. India at a time when people were just like, what? Why are you? Why would you do that? You know, wow. Why and why you did you do that? so well? Because I could see myself doing that for the next 40 years. And that was the most um, depressing thought to me at yes. the time that I would be doing the same thing. Um, but also that I had this deep inner call. I describe it like there, it was a rumbling in my bones mm. uh, to, to come and study something that didn't exist in India at the time and that no one had ever heard of and come to come to a country I'd never been to and wow. I knew no one um, basically came here to study dance therapy. Wow. That's crazy. And I know that's really new too, because I think um, uh, Uni Mel just, just uh, released a master's course in performance therapy and dance therapy as well. Wow. So it's, it's not so new. new. It's not new, unfortunately. Oh, really? It has been around a, a while, but it hasn't had the... It hasn't come to Australia, um, right? Because it started in No, America. it was in Australia because really? I did... So I did my grad dip at RMIT. RMIT wow. was doing a dance therapy course. Wow. That's how big, that's how big it was. Back in 2005, I came yeah. to Australia to study at RMIT to do dance therapy. And what happened after that was that so mine was like the second last year they did the course. They did one mm -hmm. more round. And then the whole creative arts therapy department shut down because oh of the money yeah. factor. Like you're just not going to get thousands and thousands of enrollments in creative yeah. arts therapy as opposed to business or IT or any of those other things. Yeah. And so some of it has been that, and some of it has been that the creative arts um, ha is, is still fighting for recognition, but we are in a really good place now um, because especially body-based uh, approaches um, mm. in trauma treatment mm. because we're, we've now got like the, the leading experts in trauma treatment, psychiatrists, doctors, wow. who are basically saying you cannot treat trauma without involving the body in the yes. process. So, mm. hallelujah. I know, thank you finally. To, <laughs> thank you to Bessel, <laughs> Bessel, Man, 
Yeah, yeah. Bessel van der Kolk and Dr. Gabor Mate, and like wow. these are all experts in the field who are basically talking to mainstream, you know, psychiatrists, psychologists, and counselors, mm -hmm. and telling them that if you're just talking to your clients, you're not going to get anywhere. You need to no. be moving with them. So yeah. it's a it's really exciting time to be a mover because, well, because I think part of our journey globally on the planet mm -hmm. is actually to Healing. come back into harmony yeah. with our mind, body and emotions and spirit. Mm -hmm. Like all of those are interconnected. We've overvalued the mind in all mental activities. Yes, it's so true. The, the body, body and, yeah. and physical wow. um, experiences. So, you know, and it's, it's sad that dancers and movers and artists have such a hard time, but I think this is the time for us. We're finally coming into our own power on the planet, you know, so all to all the budding artists yes. and, and creatives out there, like, um, you've got something that other people don't have. And mm. uh, I never imagined that, you know, I never imagined 20 years ago that I would be halfway across the planet helping people to reconnect with their birthright, which what exists wow. in all of us, which is their creativity, their artistry, their inner dancer, their inner artist. Wow. Um, and I get paid to do that, right? Because people have become so disconnected from that side wow. of themselves. So if you mm. are someone who is a is an artist and is a creative, mm. um, don't be disheartened by what you see around you. Follow the thread of inspiration. Mm. For what I told you, that changed my follow, life. Yeah. Follow what brings you alive, and at the same time, be practical. Be pragmatic have sources of income. If you need to have something on the side, do that. But I think the one thing I was reflecting on, uh, you know, in preparation for this conversation, the one thing I would suggest to an artist or creative, you know, beyond what I said about don't get attached to your artwork, but start to see your artwork or your artistry or your creativity as a service to your community as a service mm. to humanity. So mm. when you start to look at it from that perspective, you can identify what's a gap that needs to be filled. Um, yes. One of yeah. a, an example of that, you know, coming from a brown culture where people of all ages and shapes and sizes dance together and move together at the drop of a hat. Like it's mm. not in a nightclub or anything, but like we have all these festivals and customs. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to get into that because that's yes, a whole other yeah. conversation. But when I came here, I noticed a gap there. I was like, where do no families, yeah. where do families go? Where can you have a parent, a child and a grandparent all moving together in the same mm. space? And so I started to do that with my um, dance classes. And at the end of my dance class, I would have a community dance event where we would invite friends and family and everyone to come and perform. I remember and those. I was going to say, I have a beautiful video with your, with your mom in it too. Yeah. I have some amazing footage where everyone's like all dressed up and dancing and moving. Yes. And we've got kids and grandparents parents and you know men and young boys who usually don't get exposed yeah. to that kind of thing so you know that was one of the ways then that I um, found a niche you know mm. you, you've got to find a niche in what you're doing as an yeah. artist what is it that you offer that's unique to you um, but that comes after all that exploration and figuring out who you are as an artist and then and then also thinking about, okay, how can I use my creativity for the greater good? And so it's not mm. just about feeding your ego and making yes. you feel good about yourself. You kind of go to that next level where you use your um, creativity to, to help 
to be of service mm. in some shape or form. Like even this, what you're doing, like yes. I see brown, brown paint. As you finding your voice and giving voice to, you know, uh, uh, well, uh, by, by B-I-P-O-C is what it's called, right? Black, Indigenous yes, that's right. and people of color and giving mm. us a voice. So that's a way of using your artistry. Yeah. Um, for good, Thank you. you know. Thank uh, you so much. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I'm just, I'm not sure what time did we begin um, our Zoom call because I'm aware that it ends in an hour exactly. We are just um, about on the hour now. Okay, so we should wrap up, which, is a shame because I had so much more to ask you, <laughs> but that's all right because Anjali will definitely be joining us again and again for future episodes. She has a wealth of knowledge on so many different topics that I want to dis discuss with her in the future. So definitely we'll be having you back. Um, but thank you so much for sharing with us your story. It was My so pleasure. deeply moving and inspiring and um thank you for being vulnerable and just yeah opening up so transparently my my pleasure and uh, for thank being you the for first having me guest. yes <laughs> thank you and thank you for inviting me to be your first guest uh Woo! thank you for giving me a space to share and 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 find my voice um you know, one of the things uh, that I probably haven't shared is as a movement practitioner, I am so much more comfortable mm. dancing in front oh, of the camera instead of speaking, <laughs> uh, which is funny because everyone who I, who knows me is like, oh, but you're so yeah, good at talking. I and I'm like, yeah, the exact but, same thing. <laughs> but I need to have a conversation with someone like yourself or someone who I can sense is open to receiving mm, what I have to share sure. so otherwise it kind of falls on deaf ears um, but I just wanted to put it out there for people who have caught this on Facebook fingers mm -hmm. crossed that it's still and on Instagram. Facebook I don't know <laughs> I'm hoping and on Instagram if you have any questions or anything in particular uh, that you would like us to cover, please feel free to, um, you know, post your co questions in the comments section and we'll try and keep it a bit yes. shorter. I was, I was trying to give you short answers, but you kept asking me more I questions. Know, I, I was know. like, I was oh my God, good. this is going to go all out <laughs> of our time frame, but that's um, okay. I'm glad we, we got things off the ground and with the new moon as well, yes. it was the right time. So exactly. thank you so much for having me, Adia. Before you go, um, what services do you offer currently and where can people find you or follow you? Ah, yes. Um, so I am offering online classes, uh, as you do in lockdown in Melbourne, where we're still stage four. So can't do anything other than that. Um, I have a Bollywood dance for well-being class, uh, which is an open class. There's a Bollywood dance for seniors class. So if you have any seniors who um, need to move and are, um, you don't have to have any prior experience. Uh, it's a really global seniors class, which is awesome. I have student in Singapore and in India. Um, actually, my mom comes for that class, so that's oh, pretty cute. cool. Um, I know, I know, it's Best. it's so surreal. I can't even, yeah. I can't even tell you. Um, and I also do a mantra meditation, so that's chanting meditation. Beautiful. And I basically specialize in active forms of meditation. So there's mm. mantra meditation and an upcoming medicine drum meditation. So if you're someone and who can't, I can say I have oh, taken her medicine drum meditation done. and it is life changing, literally changed my life. So please go check that one out. <laughs> I would highly recommend <laughs> that one. I mean, although you, you got the benefit of doing it in person, in which person, is amazing, a whole other, experience. A whole yeah. other thing, but I'm going to try, I'm going to do it on online um, and get people to just you know, wear their headphones. So you yes. just get a really good uh, blast of sound vibrations. Mm -hmm. um, so that's all you, you can access all of those uh, inf more and, information um, on those at my website. One-on-one -on -one counseling. 
And the one-on-one -on -one counseling sessions as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm specializing in helping the helpers. So I help people who are the ones who are always helping other people. Uh, they're always the one that people lean on, but they may not have uh, the supports Beautiful. that they need. So I, I do offer online services and there's a couple of online, um, uh, sorry, free challenges in the pipelines around that vitality challenge for people who are feeling ex exhausted all the time and don't have energy. Awesome. Um, and there's actually a free video series starting at the end of this month on Facebook, um, which is called Movement as Medicine for anyone who's interested to explore and actually experience a few simple movement um, activities that you can use as a grounding tool, as a calming tool, if you have anxiety, if you have a lot of stress. Um, so that's on my Facebook page. My Facebook page is Embracing Spirit, Creative Arts and Dance Movement Therapy slash Holistic Wellbeing. And my website is www.embracingspirit.net. That's embracingspirit.net, not .com. Um, and just feel free to, to message me if you have any questions. Or and if Instagram you more. is at embracing Instagram spirit. Instagram is also at embracing spirit. Perfect. Yes, thanks, love. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So thank you so much, Anjali, for being on this. I was so honored to have you. Um, definitely we'll have to have you again. Um, so many more questions My to pleasure. ask. Yes, thank you everyone for listening and for tuning in. Till next time. Thanks everyone. Bye. Namaste.